My name is Brianna and I'm 25 years old and I'm suffering from both anxiety and depression. first realized I was dealing with mental health issues um, when I was about, I think I was like nine or 10 years old. I was alone a lot <laughs> when I was younger growing up because I was the youngest um, and I was seven years from my closest siblings. So really everyone was just a lot older than me. I started to recognize that I would be sad because I was always by myself. Um, and I tried to cut myself once. And I think that was like the, the first time I really recognized that I was dealing with something. I didn't know what it was when I was younger, but I was dealing with something. I actually haven't been diagnosed with anything, no. But I just, I, I know, <laughs> you know, just from me wanting to hurt myself, me being happy, and then all of a sudden I'm not out of nowhere. And it's just hard to come out of the whole like, I haven't been diagnosed by anybody, but I know that I suffer with depression. I know I have anxiety. I actually recognize I had anxiety actually early on when I was younger because I used to bite my nails like crazy all the time to the point to where I wouldn't have nails. <laughs> it'd be bleeding, it'd be ugly. Um, but that was when I started to recognize anxiety. But the depressive part, that's, that's when I tried to cut myself. When I was self-harming, I think it was just, I just felt like I, I didn't need to be here. Like, I felt like I was alone and nobody cared and that I just didn't need to be here anymore because nobody wanted me here. As if everything that I've been through, every person that I've met, you know, all that's happened in my life, I, it's like all of it goes out the window. It's like everything goes out the window and um, I don't, I can't remember none of that because in the moment it's just, I just feel like I don't deserve anything. The two biggest things that I notice is that I like to self-isolate. So whenever I'm going through anything, it's like, because I've been isolated my whole life, I just want to self-isolate. Like <laughs> you would think it would be the opposite. I want to be around people, but like, no, I I push people away. I, because I feel like I don't deserve to be around anybody or I don't deserve to be loved or have affection because I was missing out on it for so long. So I self isolate. I rather be alone. I, you know, when Justin tries to talk to me, I, it's like I start arguments or pick fights with him just so that he'll be away so I can be myself. Um, and another thing that I really notice is that I overeat. So whenever I'm sad, I, I binge, like I'll, I'll just eat and eat and, and just keep eating until I feel like I feel better. But then I don't feel better because I feel like trash because I ate a whole bunch of bad stuff. So. I have tried multiple counselors. Um, I definitely knew you know, once I started to recognize that I was dealing with things mentally, that I needed to speak to someone about it. Um, being black, <laughs> African American, we don't, everybody looks at counseling and therapy as like this shunned, you ain't supposed to do that. <laughs> you, you know, you kind of just, you have to stay strong and just deal with stuff and kind of just bottle it up. Um, but I started seeking therapy probably, like four or five years ago um and it, it took a while because the first therapist that I saw it it wasn't very comfortable for me um it, it wasn't until the most recent therapist that I or counselor she's actually a nurse practitioner that I started seeing um that I actually felt like someone was actually listening to me and understood kind of what I was going through and really cared um but yeah so throughout the process of trying to find someone, it was just awkward to me. 
like I said, just growing up in the family that I grew up in and being who I am as an African American, I felt weird. Like I shouldn't be seeking help or like something was wrong with me because I was seeking help. Like instead of just recognizing that mental health is just something that everybody deals with, it kind of just felt like I was just like weird or an outcast and something was wrong with me. Going throughout the different processes of speaking to different people, I kind of started to open up more. Um, and I knew that being in the field that I'm in as a nurse and being around my patients, that mental health is something that everybody deals with. It's not something that, you know, is so unheard of or unseen. Like everybody deals with it, but they're just scared to talk about it. They're just scared to open up about how they're actually feeling. It made me feel better because I didn't feel like I was an outcast, which I felt like an outcast a lot when I was growing up. So. It was nice to have someone to tell me that I, I wasn't. Growing up, <laughs> I was fed alone, so I really didn't feel like I had a support system at all. Um, my friendships were weird. Um, I didn't know how to have friendships. I didn't know how to love anyone simply because I really didn't know what it felt like. Um, not saying that the people around me didn't love me. I just feel like, you know, they had their own way of expressing it. And it just didn't feel like I had any of it at the time. I didn't have anyone to talk to about how I was feeling. Um, I kind of just bottled it up and I didn't say anything about it. And I kind of just dealt with everything on my own. Um, I think that I fell into this pattern of like, because nobody talked to me, because nobody or I felt like I didn't have a support system. I constantly had to prove myself. So in everything that I did, no matter what it was, school, sports, whatever, I was constantly trying to gain attention, you know, from my family, from my parents, from everyone. Now that I'm older and I know what I'm dealing with, I'm more vocal about it. So I've, you know, told my parents about it. I've told um, my then boyfriend, when I was really like going through stuff, um, my freshman year of college, I was really going through a lot. I lost a lot of friends and I really felt alone then because I don't feel like I have support system with my family. Then the friends that I had didn't have them anymore. Um, and it was right around the time that I had met Justin and we had first got together. So he was like the person that I leaned on and he s saw the worst of it. I mean, I had a lot of episodes where I just wasn't myself, really sad all the time, really depressed, um, mood swings like crazy. And he was there for me um, when I was in the thick of it. And then, you know, my dad has been a very big part of, um, my life when it comes to mental health just recently though but he's been very supportive um i let him know how bad it's gotten i've let him know that it's come down to the point to where i don't feel like i want to be here sometimes and um it was a shock to him but he's definitely opened up now more so he was like the person like you know no counseling like no therapy like what we grow up on you know but now that i've been open with him about what I've needed and how it's helped me, he's definitely opened up more to um, the idea of therapy and counseling and just mental health in general. Although I am not where I feel like I want to be yet, I truly know that I've come so far. Like, not looking at any of my accomplishments materialistically, not looking at my career, just looking at me and who I used to be and how almost every day I just wanted to not be alive. <laughs> um, every day I was allowing, you know, every little thing that someone said about me, even I remember stuff from when I was like in elementary school, <laughs> middle school. Um, kids think that bullying, like, you know, in middle school and elementary school is just like little kid stuff. Like, no, that stuff sticks with you for a long time. At least it did for me. Um, and I, I pretty much think like 
I've come so far. And I have a lot more healing to do. But I have done a lot of healing. I'm not as depressed anymore. I don't. It's not an everyday thing. It's not even. It's like not even an every month thing. Like every other week. Like it's literally like every once in a while I'll catch myself really down. Really down. And there has to be like a lot hitting me all at once for me to feel that way. Um, but I definitely see myself continuing to heal. And my faith is a big part of that. Self-care to me is giving myself a break, allowing myself to, and that's not me sitting there watching Netflix all day, but that's me realizing like, okay, you've done a lot. You know, I know that you have a lot more to do on your plate. You have a long to-do list for the rest of the week, but right now, take a second, you know, drink some water, sit down, breathe. I do some breathing exercises and I'll pick up my Bible, read a couple of scriptures. I'll pray and listen to some, you know, some gospel or whatever and kind of just relax. Happiness to me, like what true happiness would feel like because I honestly don't feel like I've really truly been there yet but I feel as though I'd be at a state where I feel like I don't have to prove anything to anyone that I would love myself like truly all of me whatever I feel like my flaws are like the way that I picture God loving me through you know all the things that I've done, like none of that matters. I, I really think that being in this true state of happiness is just truly loving yourself from within everything. Knowing that nobody's perfect, knowing that everybody makes some mistakes, that your mistakes don't make you, like you literally are beautiful. That's what happiness, I believe, would feel like. Because like I said, I'm not there yet, but I'm working on it. <laughs> if I were talking to myself when I was nine, when I first had a knife to, you know, my wrist, or even just when I was sitting there biting my nails because I just felt like just super anxious all the time, I would literally just tell myself like, you, you don't have to have it all together. You're fine. You're perfect you know, right where you are, regardless of how anybody else views you, regardless of what anybody has to say about you, you know, you're literally perfect. <laughs> Mental health is not foreign. It's, it's your brother, it's your mom, it's your sister, it's everybody in your life, you know, so and that's why when I look back on, you know, all the things that I've been through or things that I've gone through, I try not to be angry at anybody um, that has, you know, been a part of this journey that I've gone through because everybody's suffering with their own stuff, whether it's my mom and what she was dealing with or my dad or, you know, my siblings. Everybody's gone through different things, so... Mental health is, is everyone, it's every day, and it's everywhere. So if you feel like you have mental health things going on, which I mean, you probably do, don't feel like you can't ask for help. Don't feel like you're weird, like I did. I wasn't weird, you know. I just needed someone to talk to, and I needed someone to tell me that I was okay and that everything was fine and that everything was normal. And that asking for help is, is perfectly fine. <laughs>